Hey everyone, it's Marianne from the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. I want to go over the judge's decision before there's uh, any opportunity for the Municipal Labor Committee to try to expand upon what the intent really means. Um, because in the memo that they've recently submitted uh, to the MLC union leaders, um, and I'm, it's interesting that this didn't go out any further than where it went, but there's still a lot of misinformation coming out of the MLC, and the union leaders should at this point really be looking inside to say, why are we doing this? So I don't want to drag this on too long. I do want to um, I do want to show you the memo and then start to tear it apart a little bit and and then explain to you the judge's decision so that you get to see exactly um, what they're not telling you. This is the MLC memo that came out on the 13th, which was two days ago, addressed to the MLC union leaders from Harry Nespoli regarding the Medicare Advantage update. Um, Okay, so it reads, Judge Frank on Friday issued the attached order in the case brought by certain retirees. Okay, let's just actually stop right there one second. Michael, Henry, Harry, please do us a favor. It's okay, you can acknowledge us now. It's been two years. We are the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. You know, the retiree group, not certain retirees. We are the retirees uh, that have sued the city successfully now for two years. Um, as you will recall, the judge had previously issued a preliminary injunction preventing the plan from moving forward. There had been some concern whether the city could appeal directly from the issuance of a preliminary injunction. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, so we have had preliminary injunctions granted before, too, as a matter of fact. Um, actually, this was the third. You can appeal the preliminary injunction. You've done that before. Uh, and yet you can't appeal the whole case if the case hasn't been solved. So yes, you could have appealed the preliminary injunction. You, the city just chose not to, um, but I'll get to that in a second. So as indicated in the attached decision, the city's lawyers obtained the agreement of the retiree group to have the court issue a final order without any further proceeding, briefing or proceedings to expedite the matter. We were perfectly fine with the court settling the, the merits of the case on the briefs filed. Our attorney answered right away. We'll get back to you. <laughs> We're still fine with it. Um, and I think probably the city was more afraid of what was going to come out of Etna's attorney's mouth uh, or even the city's attorney's mouth themselves. But regardless, we felt that confident in our brief. They finally said that they were fine with it, with waiting, um, not waiting, and that, that they would just allow the judge to make the decision on the merits of the case. And then right away, the judge decided the case. <laughs> so wasn't the anything that the city did. Uh, that's kind of ridiculous. And Alan Klinger, shame on you for actually making that implication. The court made no new findings. That's not a lie. Um, We'll get into the brief, but we'll get into the, the, the decision in a moment. This decision allows the city to move forward with an appeal more expeditiously. Well, you could have appealed the preliminary injunction, which like you've done before, it would have probably taken till fall for the court to argue that, for us to argue that before the court. And then you probably wouldn't have gotten a decision in January. You see, you chose to accept the idea that the judge resolved the case on the merits of the brief, which instead of appealing it, waiting several months, getting a decision which would bring you into 24, then arguing the rest of the case, and then appealing that decision when you didn't like that either, you probably saw the writing on the wall like the rest of the city and recognized you were going to lose, and the judge was going to find for the retirees. And so you didn't want to prolong that, and you allowed it to happen and just appealed the whole darn thing, because that was actually smart thing on your part. Uh, but we we understand why you did it. In essence, this decision does not substantively have changed the status of Medicare Advantage. It sure as hell does. You can't force us into it. You can have it, but you can't force us into it. Um, the city has indicated its intention to move quickly to appeal. Well, we always knew that that was coming. Um, you know, you made you made that decision um, 
<laughs> pretty crystal clear. And and clearly it shows you just keep doubling down even though you, you keep losing. This is the judge's decision. He says on June 5th, the court issued a preliminary injunction in this matter. The court has been informed by the parties that they do not wish for the court to hold any additional argument, nor will there be further submissions. As such, this matter is ripe for de final determination. The court therefore grants the petition for the reasons indicated in the July 6th, 2023, uh, namely the doctrine of promissory estoppel and the provisions of the New York City Administrative Code of 12-126 bars the action sought to be taken by the respondents, that's the city. The court does not reach the last point of relief in the position, petition, namely that the respondents should be enjoined from disseminating alleged false and misleading statements of the Aetna Medicare Advantage plan. And the reason why that he didn't need to reach that is because he basically mooted that argument by saying that we couldn't be forced into the Medicare Advantage plan. Ordered that the respondents are permanently enjoined meaning stopped, from requiring any city retirees and their dependents from being removed from their current health insurance plans and from being required to either enroll in an Aetna Medicare Advantage plan or seek their own health coverage. And this is huge because this does stop them from forcing us into that plan. So Respondents are permanently enjoined from requiring any city retiring their depends on being removed from their current health plans. They cannot force us off of our senior care, which means they can't force us out of traditional Medicare. Now, he said that he did this based on uh, Administrative Code 12-126 and promissory estoppel. So this is the restraining order that he granted on the 6th. He says, preliminarily, the decision and order of this court dated June 6th is vacated. The following order is limited to the order of uh, seeking to show cause for injunctive relief. The petitioners bring this action pursuant to Article 78 to annul the respondents collectively referred to as the city's implementation of the new health care plan for city retirees. Petitioners allege that the city unlawfully tried to divest Medicare eligible retirees and their dependents of promised health care benefits by attempting to switch their retirees from their existing health care plans to an inferior Aetna Medicare Advantage plan. Petitioners now move for preliminary injunction in joining the city from forcing the retirees to switch from their existing Medicare health benefits and from being required to either enroll in an Aetna Medicare Advantage plan or seek the, their own health coverage. The city opposes the instant application for the reasons set forth below. The petitioner's application for a preliminary injunction is granted. Now, the standard, and this is what we had to meet for the court to grant this preliminary injunction. A party seeking a preliminary injunction must clearly demonstrate three things. The likelihood of the ultimate success on the merit, the prospect of irreparable injury if the injunction is not issued, and three, a balance of the equities in the movement's favor. So we had to prove all of these things to the judge and clearly we did because we do know that this was eventually granted. So it says, first, the court finds that the petitioners have shown clear and convincing evidence that there is a likelihood of success on the merit. The court agrees that it is likely that the court will ultimately find that the respondents are stopped from switching retirees into a Medicare Advantage plan and that the city New York City Administrative Code 12-126 does not permit the action that the city plans to take. Moreover, the court also feels that some of the petitioners are likely to succeed on the merits of based on the moratorium law and that there is too much uncertainty as to what doctors or other medical providers will accept the proposed new plan, thus rendering the plan arbitrary and capricious as things presently stand. The court finds that the petitioners have a promissory estoppel claim, and you'll remember that was one of the things that he granted the final case on. Um, claim that is likely to succeed, promissory estoppel requires a clear and unambiguous promise, reasonable and foreseeable reliance by the parties to whom the promise was made, and an injury sustained in reliance on that promise. The petitioners have shown that numerous promises were made by the city and that the city employees and future retirees that they would receive a Medicare supplemental plan when they retired and that their first level of coverage once they retired would be Medicare. The respondents have argued that the promises were not definite, were not forward-looking. The court respectfully disagrees. The words such as will are used when such 
when words such as will are used, that is to this court, a promise that is future looking. Finally, the court does not believe that any of the prior case law cited by the parties is entirely on point. Thus, this is a unique set of facts. In addition, the petitioners argue that the retirees have suffered and will suffer injuries because of detrimental reliance on the city's promise. The court finds that this is unambiguous promise is likely sufficient to ultimately find a stopper in this action. So the judge is basically saying, yes, I'm recognizing the city made these promises to the retirees when they were still working for the city of New York and that you relied as the retiree, you relied on that promise to decisions that you made and that those decisions, you know, you cannot walk back on. And at this point, your whole life has been implemented. Do you made decisions based upon that promise that was made to you? If you were now to have that reneged, you would be harmed. And in some situations, we were already harmed by this whole process. So the court is also convinced that the action that the city will be likely found to be in violation of the New York City Administrative Code, Section 12-126. This section provides that the city will pay the entire cost of health insurance coverage for city employees, city retirees, and their dependents. To this court, this wording is unambiguous and applies to this matter. Moreover, the history of Section 12-126 shows that the city intended to provide all employees, all retired employees, health plans, and intended to assume the full payment for them. This section was originally enacted through the city's expanded powers, and it goes on to talk about where it was done and that this was done in 1965. Uh, the 1965 resolution announcing these benefits stated that it is the desire and intent of the city of New York to grant all of its retired employees a choice of health plans and the city shall assume full payment for such and hospital insurance coverage, health and hospital insurance coverage. This is huge because that was the second reason that the judge granted this case in favor of the retirees. He said, nonetheless, to this court, Section 12-126 does appear to be a codification that the city must pay the entire cost of health care coverage. There has also been discussion that the proposed plan is premium free, and that's basically becoming from the city and the MLC. The court finds this argument unavailing, as the court notes that Section 12-126 of the code makes no mention of the word premium, but rather uses the word coverage. Um, so this was very, very important that the court was able to find, find this decision. Um, as this court finds that the petitioners have established a likelihood of success on the merits of these factors, the court does not reach issues on the other reach issues argued by the petitioners. And that's because he didn't have to. There was so much already in these first, uh, in these first two, three, that he really didn't need to get into all the other arguments. Um, these he felt were egregious enough that we met the benchmark of that three-prong test. He says, uh, the city argues in the in opposition, the petitioners have not been able to prove that the Aetna Medicare Advantage plan is inferior and delaying this new policy will derail the city's plans. Petitioners in turn argue that hundreds of thousands of retirees may suffer disruption in medical care if the city is not enjoined. As this matter deals with the health decisions of an aging and potentially vulnerable population, mostly on fixed incomes, any lapse of care for these people would lead to deleterious impacts. Moreover, at oral argument, and this is huge, <laughs> This, the attorney for Aetna acknowledged that there would likely be situations where medical care deemed to be needed by a doctor for a retiree could be turned down and certain medical facilities would be unavailable to retirees, just like we've been saying all along. To this court, this demonstrates that should this plan go forward, irreparable harm would result. There can be no more specific irreparable harm than this. The balance of the equities to this court clearly weigh in favor of the petitioners due to their possible loss of parts of their health care coverage. Petitioners have, by clear and convincing evidence, met the requisite burden for a preliminary injunction by exhibiting the likelihood of ultimate success on the merits. The prospect of irreparable injury and absence of injunctive relief and the balance of equities weighing the petitioner's favor 
The decision and order of this court dated June 6, 2023 is hereby vacated and ordered that the petitioner's application for preliminary injunction is granted and the respondents are temporarily enjoined until further order of this court. Now, remember, this document came first. The one that I showed you before was the final document. So this was really important to show you that um, in this last document that you saw, this was the first action of the court. The one that I showed you just before was the final action where the judge actually granted the entire petition. Um, reading this MLC memo, you can clearly see that you're being lied to by the MLC leadership once again. The judge stopped the plan, us from being forced into the plan. This was always a, a, an issue of you being able to offer Medicare Advantage as an option like you've always had. You just can't force us into it. And that's what we've been trying to teach you. Know your history. Unions are very important in the city of New York, but I'm also going to tell you again, there's a lot to this that's been forced upon you by the labor relations. And and Bob Lynn knew exactly what he was doing in getting us to agree to the MLC agreements, playing on your greed, and realizing that he needed to make sure that retirees and employees uh, basically got burned. I really think that this was a plot. Um, if I was a conspiracy theorist, that this was a plot to basically implode the stabilization fund and bring you all down with it. Bob Lynn is not like 12-126 since the late 70s. He's been trying to get away with, do away with 12-126 and pass costs onto, onto employees for decades. And I really think he was looking to end his career um, and his final swan song would be forcing all of us onto some sort of a payment plan. And that that's my belief. Um, we have seen a lot of things in the historical records about Bob Lynn and the costs and negotiating and where he and Koch used to celebrate when he was able to negotiate a contract that was under the rate of inflation which still happens today. And through attrition bargaining, where you he is basically convincing you all to think that you have only a finite value and that you can't get anything else unless you give something up. And this last time, unfortunately, due, a, due to a few bad union leaderships from a few unions, uh, you gave up your most, one of your most valuable prizes is your retired people that had supported you, championed you, built your unions and built this city. That's not the way we're supposed to behave as labor. We are supposed to set the example. You are supposed to treasure your retirees and protect them knowing that one day you will once be us. So this was a little bit longer of a video, but it was very important for you to understand this MLC letter is a bunch of garbage. Um, all of the unions, please pay attention. You need to get rid of this MLC attorney. He is not doing you any favors. He is basically doing the bidding of the United Federation of Teachers. And since they have a controlling vote of the Municipal Labor Committee, they probably shouldn't be in the Municipal Labor Committee either. When the committee was started, it was just DC 37, and there was still a two thirds vote needed to pass a motion. And yet that one union needed to get a lot of votes in place in order to pass a motion. And I would also ask is to brush up on your Roberts rules because if they try to force a decision on you, like one is coming really soon over the healthcare for active workers and under 65 retirees, you might wanna start pushing back on a forced decision without ever looking at the contracts. Learn from what, they forced you to do and how it impacted the retirees and dragged you through court for the next two years. Don't do it. Make sure that if they try to force you to a vote, that you muster up the votes from your peers to delay it and push it back so that you get the contracts and you read it line by line. Because if you read the contracts from the Aetna Medicare Advantage plan, you would never have agreed to them. So don't believe this letter where the judge didn't find anything. He sure enough found a lot.
please do your due diligence. It's your members that are relying on you.